or CD0-002. So this exam here is going to teach, or actually going to test, I should say, this specific area around making sure that you understand the standard cloud methodologies that you're able to implement, maintain, and deliver cloud technologies. This could be anywhere from network to storage to virtualization technologies, but also to be able to understand areas like IT security and best practices related to cloud implementations. When we talk about CompTIA Cloud Plus, just be aware that there's going to be some ideal candidates that should be looking at this exam likely going to want to have a network plus certification or server plus not required but highly recommended you're going to have two to three years of work experience but also have some kind of work experience as well with hypervisors now this exam isn't going to test you specifically on vmware it's not going to test you specifically on hyper-v it's going to test you more or less on what a hypervisor is, what it does, how you can migrate, uh, areas of focus you may have to look at with planning for cloud, uh, cloud deployments, for example. But you're not going to get tested on what vMotion is and how you set it up or anything. That's not going to be part of the test. Now, this is the area that I really want you to focus on. There is five domains in this exam, and what I like about CompTIA exams is they tell you the percentage of the exam that's going to be dedicated to that domain. This is sort of a differentiator between a lot of other uh, testing service uh, organizations like CompTIA. For example, CSA uh, could be an example, Exxon, you know, ITIL, whatever. Uh, and then when you look at the vendors like AWS and Google, uh, EMC, VMware, not all of them give you sort of the percentage of the examination that's going to be dedicated to that domain. So this is a good sort of baseline for you to understand maybe where you want to focus on, perhaps. Some people may be really good at security and troubleshooting, might, but might not have any kind of deployment experience. So you want to look at the domains and try to determine uh, where you want to focus on. Now, if you see here 1.0, you can see that's 24% of this exam. What you want to do is go down here to where it says domain 1.0. So what exactly is in domain.1, uh, domain 1.0 that is, config and deployment? <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, it's fairly straightforward. I am certainly not going to read all this to you because there's, a, there's approximately 23 pages of which I think uh, 10 or 13, somewhere around that range is actually dedicated to the domain areas. But I would recommend you go through and look at, for example, the different areas they're going to test you on, areas that uh, are going to be a focus area now one of the things about the exam I'll be honest they're not going to test you on every one of these they want you to know what it is it could be testable but I wouldn't expect to, to have you know ba based on the number of questions you may get a course you know two or three uh, in one of these subdomains, maybe one at the most, depending on, you know, depending on how the test falls. Now, generally, there's at least two two pools of tests of the of the test itself. So, what does that mean? Now, generally, most vendors, most testing organizations they have at least two versions of the test. And the reason is, is because they don't want someone to uh, be able to go and put the answers for that exam on the internet and people memorize them. 
So having two or three different versions of the pool generally can help mitigate people cheating, basically. That, that's not always the case, but it, it, it would help for sure. So that's generally why they like to do that. So for example, you and your work friend could go to the same location, take the same exam, and both of you may actually get different versions of the exam. So that's really the goal. So you'll see that, uh, for example, 1.3, given a scenario, analyze system requirements to determine if a given testing plan is appropriate. So you want to go ahead and look at this. Make sure you understand certain aspects of this. So for example, if you're going around analyzing system requirements, what are the requirements you're going to analyze? Why are you analyzing those? Would you look at production different than development or QA, right? You want to look at different areas around testing, maybe vulnerability testing, penetration testing, load testing. These are different tests that could be ran. So you want to go through each of these subdomains and, and get an idea of where you think you may be good. For example, 1.8 is a good one. Migration types, you're going to definitely see uh, a couple questions just on this area and from taking the beta exam I can tell you that it would be wise to know this area fairly well because like I said two or three questions uh, could could definitely make the difference between passing or failing on this exam security again go through here make sure you know security Security is about 20% of the test, I believe, right? If we go back up, let's go up to the to the domains and just validate how much of the test it is, right? It says, oh, security 16%. Okay, that's not too bad, right? So 24% for the first domain. And then the third domain is 18. So as you see, the first domain is tested more, more heavily than perhaps the second domain and the third domain but 5.0 is of course tested heavier than security so again you want to go to the domains and, and try to figure out do you really know the, the different ways to migrate to the cloud is it p to v is it to, you know uh, c to c you know v to c whatever whatever the approach is do you know your storage types right for example do you understand what object storage is so my recommendation is go ahead, select the link here, make sure you download the uh, the domain objectives here and maybe print them out and go through certain areas that you think you're weak on. Now, my course covers pretty much most of these. Now, the one thing I will say is that if you notice certain areas, some of these are redundant. So in my course, I've weeded out the redundant areas and I just covered it pretty much all at once. So you may want to go through, for example, you may want to look at different areas around analyzing requirements. That's, you know, troubleshooting, maintenance, figure out where your, your, where your strengths are and where your weaknesses. Backups, right? So it's a good idea to know the different backup types. So why would you want to use a clone over a full backup or a differential, right? Management. So again, a lot of area. And then look in the back. There's a, essentially a dictionary or an acronym list, list I guess, is, <clears throat> excuse me, is what you would call it. Now, all of these acronyms you will expect to be tested on uh, you know, the, all of these are fair game is sort of what they're saying for the exam. So make sure when you read an exam question, if they say CMDV, that you understand that it, they're referring to a configuration management database because they're not going to spell out configuration management database. They're going to say CMDV. So just be aware of that. So take take some time to review these you can see that there's a lot of acronyms go through this highlight uh, your strengths so on and so on uh, it, it would be a good idea so that's the objectives let's proceed on to the next module
don't forget to go to udemy.com. The link is in the description for my CompTIA Cloud Plus Bootcamp. I'm excited to work with you, hopefully, when you sign up to get you certified and prepared for hopefully a new role in the cloud when you do pass your certification. So please do go over to Udemy. The link is below. The discount code is there for you to take exclusively on Udemy. Have a great day.